Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi, and today we are going to talk about some pretty major changes to American Express benefits in 2020. Before we dive into it, I wanted to apologize for my voice. I'm dealing with a pretty bad flu, but I feel like this is worth talking about given how drastic these changes are. If you're someone who gets sick of my voice and you want to skim read the details, go to the blog post down below. It's going to be pretty detailed. As a reminder, a lot of these benefits and changes are happening on January 1st of 2020. In this video, we'll talk about purchase protection, roadside assistance, and then finally, travel benefits, which make it actually competitive with something like the Chase Sapphire Reserve. The reason I'm very excited about this is because it feels like the Platinum card is now stepping into the ring on a one-to-one -one basis with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Starting off with purchase protection, we're seeing it drop from 120 days to 90 days. The funny thing is that they increased this to 120 days in August of 2018. So it's a pretty recent change. Seeing them step it back might mean that it was more expensive than they would have hoped. With a lot of these benefits, insurance type benefits, it's pretty much the cost of the program and then how much it's driving revenue for them. If they're paying $10 million for a benefit, they want to make sure that they have more people signing up for the card that they're getting 10 million back. So maybe signups, maybe interest for some cards, or otherwise annual fees, as well as transaction fees. Return protection is also being removed from most cards other than these ones down below. Those are going to be the Platinum card, so the personal business as well as the corporate, the Delta Reserve card, both the personal one as well as the business one, the Hilton Aspire, the Marriott Brilliance. Those make a lot of sense because those are all $450 annual fee cards and higher, so they probably want to keep those benefits on those cards. A few other ones that don't have that hefty of an annual fee keeping return protection are going to be the Plum, Everyday Preferred, as well as the Blue Cash Preferred. My guess for why these non-top tier cards are keeping the benefit is likely people who have those cards aren't using these perks. Based off 5, 10, 20 years of data, they can see that, hey, people who have the Blue Cash Preferred don't actually read the terms as much, so they don't end up using these benefits. That's my best guess anyways, though. Otherwise, I don't really know what they're doing. For me, I'm a pretty big fan of return protection because it allows me to shop at places that have prohibitively stupid return policies. So some places I shop at end up having a restocking fee of 15%, and instead of doing that, I can use return protection, which ends up saving me that 15%. What are my thoughts on purchase protection? Since we had it at 90 days before anyways, it's not that big of a deal because you're not really losing out that much unless you recently signed up for the card specifically for that 120 days. What about return protection? This is actually a pretty big hit just because return protection offered a lot of value for no annual fee cards. It looks like we're seeing American Express move towards the premium side, so they do want you to build out a system with them and to have multiple of their cards. And for them, it's something that makes sense because they're probably seeing more value from annual fees as well as transaction fees rather than paying interest. If you look at a lot of these cards, they are either charge cards or cards targeted towards people who don't keep a balance. I don't really expect most people who are bad with credit are applying for $450 annual fee cards. For most people who fall into that demographic, they're probably looking at any annual fee, even $95, as something outrageous. So it, you can see how they're targeting moving forwards, especially if they're concerned about a recession or anything else happening. Next, moving on to roadside assistance. So we're seeing this benefit completely removed. I have heard different data points from different people, but the most updated one is that it's completely being removed. This is going to be from Dan Steele, who has a contact at American Express. And initially, we didn't know if the premium one was getting removed. It is. Obviously, this can change in the future, but it sounds like it's being completely removed. And you might want to plan around that, whether it's buying AAA, which seems pretty affordable, or maybe having another card that offers the benefit and just keeping that in your wallet. Especially if you live on the East Coast, I feel like it's not unlikely that you end up using this once or twice per year anyways, especially during winter. So that's about $50 to $100 in value. Diving into travel benefits, this is going to be where American Express is really making a fight and push against the Chase Sapphire Reserve. We're seeing them add trip delay protection with two different levels. Tier 1 is going to be $500 of coverage for meals, lodging, if your trip is delayed for more than 6 hours for a covered reason. Be aware that this does need to be for round-trip bookings, which is a bit different than some other cards. If you use the card just to pay your taxes and fees on award tickets, that also is covered. For Tier 1, we have the Platinum Card, so the Personal Business Corporate, the Delta Reserve, the Personal Business, the Hilton Aspire, as well as the Marriott Brilliance. In Tier 2, it's going to be $300 of coverage when your delay is 12 hours or more. 
In tier two, you have the gold card, the green card, the business gold card, the Delta Platinum card, both the personal and the business. Tier one makes a lot of sense. It's pretty much the 450 annual fee cards and up. Tier two though is a bit weird because I feel like there's a bunch of cards that are missing from that section that could easily fall into there. Blue Cash Preferred, Everyday Preferred, the Hilton Surpass card, all could easily fall into those requirements of being in that annual fee range. So this is actually the main reason I recommend using the Chase Sapphire Reserve to Book instead of the Amex Platinum card, even though you get higher multipliers for that Platinum card. And the reason is because if you live in a city that commonly has delays, this can easily add up. And it could be the difference between sleeping at the airport and having a hotel paid for. Travel accident insurance is being completely removed from all American Express cards. The final one is going to be trip cancellation and interruption. This is going to cover up to $10,000 per trip with a max of $20,000 per 12 month period. This is going to cover flight cancellations, which occur from weather, terror, call to jury, sudden illness or injury, and it only covers round trip bookings. If you pay the taxes and fees of award tickets, this also covers that. You're only getting this on the Platinum, so the Personal Business Corporate, the Delta Reserve Personal and Business, Hilton Aspire, as well as the Marriott Brilliance. Again, this is going to be for cards that have a $450 annual fee and up. I think it's a pretty good benefit. The only thing to be careful with here is that it has to be round trip bookings. So for someone hopping around Asia or Europe where you're not doing those round trip, if you're just going to different places, then this might be a bit dangerous, but just depends on you. If you're someone who mostly goes to one destination rather than hopping around in different countries, then this might not matter to you. I think to me, the interesting thing here is that it actually ends up being competitive with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. It might not make sense for most people still just because you have travel credits that are really hard to use. You have benefits that are pretty good, but still a bit worse than the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, but it's still getting more competitive rather than less. I'll probably do a future video on who should get which card, but I think if you're someone who cannot use all of the incidental credits from the American Express Platinum, then obviously the Chase Sapphire Reserve is still a better pick just because the effective annual fee is going to be a bit lower. Also, if you're someone who has a lot of general travel, so if you do Airbnbs and stuff like that, then Chase Sapphire Reserve is also a bit better. If you're someone who does a lot of premium flights, if you book a lot of flights through American Express, then the Platinum might be a bit better of a pick just because you do see some discounts on those premium fares. On that note, if you are someone interested in learning about any of these cards and you want to support our channel, a very easy way to do that would be to use the links that are on our website or the ones down below in the description box. Hopefully that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is what are your thoughts on these changes? Be aware that they don't happen until January 1st of 2020, but what are your thoughts? Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? Overall, I think they are net good for the premium cards, but probably bad for the mid-tier and no annual fee cards. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share the video with them. It'll probably help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.